Morning, everybody. This is Alicia Katz Pollock from RoyalWise.com, and welcome to Budgeting in QuickBooks Online. My name is Alicia Katz Pollock, and I will be your tour guide for today. So let's go ahead and get started. So on our agenda for today, we're going to talk about budgeting, both for your business and also how to run your budgets in QuickBooks Online. So first, we're going to talk about why you should make a budget and why you need to have a budget. And then we're going to take a look at budget reports and cash flow forecasting. All right. So let's first talk about budgeting and the purpose of budgeting and why it's a good idea. So when I work with small businesses, most of them don't even have a budget. They just look at the bottom line, and as long as there is money in their bank account, they're happy. And so they're doing what they're doing, and they're making their income, and they have their expenses. And as long as they're making more than they're spending, they're satisfied. But when you make a budget, it allows you to kind of really give some deep thought to what you're doing, sometimes why you're doing it, and how you're doing it. If you want to grow, you have to have an awareness of your cash flow. You have to know when are your high periods and when are your low periods. You need to know that if you're going to save for a future expense, where is that money going to come from and when can you sock it away? Or if you're leveraging debt to grow your business, you know whether it's credit cards or loans, then you also need to pay those off. The more time you put into planning your budget, the more you can strategize about where your funds are going so that your business isn't happening to you, you're happening to your business. Uh, there's a great quote from Antoine uh, de saint Hubert, and I don't speak French, so sorry if I butcher that. Um, and that quote is, a goal without a plan is a wish. So if you have a goal and you're not actually putting steps into place to achieve that goal, you're just kind of like hoping it's going to happen. The idea is that you can set targets and monitor your goals to see how you're doing, that you can think about, well, this is how I should be doing at this point in the business, and then you can compare and see. And if you are hitting your goals, then great, you can decide what to do with that surplus. If you're not hitting your goals, that gives you an opportunity to do some advisory and figure out, well, what are the strategies that I can put into place to make adjustments? And I was just in a great session from QBTrainingEvents.com with Jeannie Whitehouse, where she went into all the different ways that you can think about, like, if you're not hitting your targets, what's going on? You know, are you spending too much on inventory? Are you running out of stock? Are you overspending on something? Are you not advertising enough? She went through different strategies to figure out how to get to your goal points. And I highly recommend that one. And I'll try and throw in some of her tips as we are going over this today. For example, you look at your numbers from last year and you're like, okay, I want to grow the company by 20% this year. So if that's the case, then you need to know what those numbers are and increase them by 20%. That way you can look at all of your expenses and then use that kind of factor and say, okay, well, I want 20% more income, but I only want to spend 10% more on the expenses. And so you can go through your budget and do that math and adjust your numbers to give you your targets for the year. Another way of budgeting your strategies is taking a look at what you have to spend and make sure you're not overspending it. So whether it's for the whole company or whether for it's for one particular department, let's say you decide that you want to spend $500 in advertising. If you're going to give your advertising department $500, you know, and I'm using very small numbers right now, but if you're going to give them that amount, what are they going to spend it on and how are they going to allocate that money? There's also the thoughts about future development. Maybe you want to make a new website. Maybe you want to buy a new computer. Maybe you want to buy a building. Uh, if you are going to invest in your future, you need to sock some money away. And so you need to, um, if you set your budget, that's going to let you know where are your busy times and where are your quiet times so that during your busy times, you don't just go, oh, I have all this extra money. Let me go spend it. You can actually set some of it aside so that when you know that those, uh, those upcoming expenses are coming up, you can plan ahead and have that money. So there's all kinds of ways of thinking about it from the top down, from income being allocated to expenses acting as resources. And so your budget, I kind of think of it vertically. 
that you start at the top with all of the income and then you distribute it down through your um, through your expenses. And then I also think about it left to right over time. You know, you start in January and you um, you plan your year ahead of time. One of the things that's really nice about budgeting in QuickBooks Online is that you really can use it as not just a planning tool, but also as a business management tool. You should always create a budget for your total company spending, but you can also make smaller subdivided budgets. You can budget for a particular customer project. You can budget by classes, um, and you can have as many different budgets as you want. And I'm going to talk more about the customers and the classes as we go. Does anyone have any questions so far? Go ahead and put them in the Q&A and so that I can address them. I just mentioned budgeting by customer and by class. So let's go ahead and talk about those ways of budgeting. So the first one is your operations budget, and that's your budget for the whole entire year for the whole company. It's basically looking at your profit and loss report and then being proactive and allocating what you want your ideal P&L to look like by the end of the year. And so you take a look at all the different income streams and all of the different expenses, and you kind of try and be realistic. What do you realistically think that you're going to earn? What revenue sources are they coming from? And then once you have that money, how are you going to allocate it? What are you planning to spend and on what expenses? And then that way you have kind of a roadmap for the year for what it's all going to look like. So you always want to start with an operations budget, a whole budget for the year. You can also use a budget to work with your customers. And it could be working with customers and sub-customers. If you're using QuickBooks Online Plus, you can also do it by project. So if you're using the project center for your customers, you can do budgets by project. And what's nice about this is you can... Uh, take a look at the year and when you expect to invoice the customers and how much you're going to invoice them for. I mean, maybe it's a short project all in one month, but maybe it's a longer project that might take six months or a year. You can actually go through and go across and say, okay, I'm going to invoice them this amount in April and this amount in June and this amount in August and this amount in October. And then you can see when you're going to have those influx of, of income. Then you can also plan your spending. When do you have to buy materials? How much are you going to spend on those materials? And then you can put those across in your cost of goods across each month. And maybe you're going to incur payroll for the project. You can say, well, this much of my payroll is for this project. And um, I'm going to have to spread that out across these months over here. It could even be allocating your overhead. Now, that's really getting into the nitty gritty and into the weeds, but you can take an expense that has nothing to do with the project, but then allocate some of that labor. For example, that, you know, if you're doing a, you're in construction and you're building a house, you've got somebody in your back end administration and, you know, they're working for the company that they're, they're not working on the project, but you might consider those overhead expenses and include the overhead expenses in the budget as well, which will help you make sure that you're making some profit uh, off of the project. Then another way of running a budget is making a budget by class. 